Okay, I have the spindle all connected up and uh, the spindle cable is going out the back there and it's looking okay. I also put the circuit breakers in there so they're all in their final positions now and I've just been running the spindle a bit to tune the speeds as controlled by Linux CNC over here so if I I'll just show you my test program so it's just going to set the spindle speed to 3000, 6000, 9000 and so on for 10 seconds each uh, and then turn it off at the end and I'm using this thing called um, Lincurve to tune the speed so uh, I'll maybe put a link to this in the description below to the um, blog and the forum post where I figured out how to do this but basically your values are not going to be exactly the same so you can see there it's not 6000 what I'm actually going to have to output is 6460 and so on um, but the result that I get using that even though it's quite tedious to set it up um, works quite well so I've just been using this tachometer and a little bit of sticky reflective tape on here somewhere and um, <laughs> just run over and over and gradually tweak the values and you should get something quite nice. Let's see if I can run this here for you. Oh, whoops. Alt tab. Run. So we're looking for multiples of 3000. Oh, that's way lower than it was just before. What the hell? It takes a little while for this meter to catch up. That's lower as well, what happened? So this should be 9000. What the hell? All the numbers are slightly lower. This is 12,000. That's better. 15. Eighteen. Twenty-one. No, twenty-one. And then the last one's twenty-four, but doesn't quite go to twenty-four. Oh, it's close. But the, um, the reason it doesn't quite go to 24 is because I opted to prioritize the frequency on here which goes to a maximum of 400. Well it does let you go over 400 but I don't think it's, uh, I don't think you're supposed to go over 400 with this because it's not sold as something that can do that. I think it's just sort of a little bit of a buffer there that it doesn't immediately blow up if you over stress it. Uh, but I don't want to over stress it. And also on the, the motor here it's written 400 hertz. One of those numbers there, I think, might be a bit hard to see, but uh, there, 400 hertz. So for that reason, the upper bound is going to be about 23, or whatever it said there before. It's not going to go up to 24,000. But all the other numbers, if I just run that again here, um, all the other numbers are going to be accurate to what the program requests. So this is what it looks like on here and just steps up to 6,000, 9,000 and so on unless of course I hit the escape key in which case it just stops so everything uh, is looking quite good as far as the spindle goes and I'm not expecting it to have any interference yet uh, just again everything's just sort of loosely dangled in there and I, I think as long as I just have the MDF one, I'm just going to leave it all dangling like that. I'm um, not going to really spend the time to get it all nicely tidied up. So I'm not expecting to have to fight interference between these cables for a while yet. But um, hopefully won't have to, <laughs> even when it's all built, we should be fine. They're all nicely shielded cables. So yeah, really hoping I don't have all those issues that I had with my other machine. And even though I tidied up most of this cabinet now, I still have the stepper motors dangling over the side here because 
My step drill that I ordered from China ages ago still not arrived. I bought this one locally and public service announcement here. Do not buy one of these, they're absolute garbage. This <laughs> says titanium coated, right? You can see there, that coating there, it just wore off in about three seconds and I literally could not get anything done with this. So this is, the reason I bought this is to get those holes there those holes there, larger, I, I could only go up to 12 mil with the step drill that I had but I need to go to about 18 to get these in there so I'll have to wait a little bit longer for that unfortunately Well, everything has been going very, very well with this MDF mock-up. Uh, this is the Tiger test pattern that I was doing yesterday. I like this one because it has a lot of direction changes and a lot of lifting and lowering of the tool piece, or the pen in this case, uh, and it just looks kind of cool. Um, so I was running that at as fast as the machine could go, basically, so all of the engraving strokes were done at the speed of rapids as well which is fine for a pen. Um, 
And that was actually drawn over twice, by the way. Uh, you wouldn't know it because all the draw the lines are drawn in exactly the same place, which is quite impressive, I think, considering it's just wood. And considering a lot of these things are not really held in properly, see there's only one bolt on the end there and one bolt on the other end for each of those rails. This uh, thing has one bolt, which I'm not even sure if that's in properly there. Uh, oh, that one has two, good. <laughs> But a lot of this other stuff doesn't really have um, bolts properly tightened or, I mean they're tightened but they're not, they're not all there. So, oh and this rail here, it's just sitting there so I can actually, see, I can just move that there. And this is also not sitting on there very well. But because it's heavy enough and it's only a pen, that was uh, enough to do that for fine. But, like I say, I think this MDF mock-up has re reached the end of its usefulness because if I want to actually cut anything with this, which is what I was kind of hoping to do, because I, I did spend quite a bit of time making it as nice as I could. Problem is though, to cut stuff, I will have to now clamp these rails down here on this axis. And that's a bit of a problem because, well, for two reasons. On this one, I made a bit of a mistake in that the, the top piece here is sitting exactly flush with the edge of the extrusion underneath. But in the real design, it's going to be it's going to be in the middle like that. So if I drill a hole to fit the MDF mock-up, the holes are going to have to be slightly different for the the real aluminium one when I make it. The other problem is that those holes, if I make it for the real one, uh, are going to have to go right there, which is a very very awkward place to drill because if you try and drill here, it's going to be drilling like that, and it's just going to slip. So I'm not even sure how I'm going to do that. Um, but I have learned enough to know that all of my pieces are in the right sizes and the holes are in the right place and everything. So this should be enough to give the okay to the laser cut place to cut the aluminium for me. Uh, another reason why I don't think I want to use the MDF mock-up to actually machine anything is because the precision is not very good. I mean, <laughs> obviously like that with the, just the single bolt in the end is not very good. But even if I put everything in there not quite nicely, uh, I don't have a good level like I discovered when I was trying to draw this that the pen would touch here, but then it wouldn't touch here So I had to adjust it and make some uh, Changes with my rubber bands there um, But it's just not going to be very accurate and The reason is because a lot of these larger pieces I had to make by printing out on a piece of paper or multiple pieces of paper sticking the pieces of paper together and then using that as a plan to manually cut out the MDF and manually drill the holes the exception to that is these plates here, these two, three plates, and that one. Uh, they were all machined on the small CNC, so they're nice and accurate. So I think what I might do is I'll just go ahead and order the aluminium, and I've the guy said he can give me some offcuts for smaller pieces like this that I can use to um, machine myself this piece. So what I'll do is I'll build the whole machine up in aluminium except for this plate here. And that hopefully will be good enough as just MDF because it's it's all under compression here, right? It's not undergoing a lot of twisting or um, bending forces. So I think just leaving this piece as MD, MDF should be fine enough to machine those pieces from aluminium myself and then put them in there. Uh, I think that is how I'm going to go. One of the nice things about Linux CNC is how configurable and flexible it is. And one of the cool things I just discovered is that you can completely control everything from a remote location like a different computer. Um, and just to take one step back, why I felt like I might need to do this is because even though it's quite useful to use the keyboard to do shortcut keys, like these buttons here, uh, like play, stop, resume, and also the e-stop, you can do with certain keys like R, P, S, and escape. Um, but that doesn't work if you have a different window in front of the well, I don't have a different window, but let's say I had a different window like this. Okay, so I've got a File Explorer window up there. Now if I try and do these keys, it's not going to work. Um, so it's good, but it's only good if you don't have any other windows open. And I'm quite likely to be having other windows open, like a web browser or File Explorer or something like that. So I don't want to be caught out if I suddenly try and like do an e-stop or a soft e-stop like that, and nothing happens. Um, so I thought, how could I make like a external panel that has those buttons on it so that when I hit that panel those buttons would 
take effect no matter what is going on on the screen here. And so I did some digging around and I came up with something called NML which lets you basically do that. Um, anyway, let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So if I run this job, uh, it's got a 10 second pause to let the spindle get to speed. And then we start doing something over there. Well, it's actually not doing anything, but the point is it's running, right? And then you have a completely different computer over here with a program that I wrote, or it's basically just a small part of the tutorial. And if we go pause like this, maybe you can hear the step and stop. Nothing happening. And we can uh, resume. Like that, and now we're back in action. And I can also just completely stop everything. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I was just doing that with the, the keyboard on, on this laptop here, but this could just as easily be a Raspberry Pi with some physical button inputs or something. And it could all be working over the Wi-Fi. Uh, and you could also put an FPV camera on here to watch what you watch what was happening and have it all in a nice little battery powered unit that you could carry around just to keep near you wherever you are doing other things in the house um, while the machine is working and you'd be able to e-stop it from anywhere that would be cool wouldn't it so i might try that one day